Speaking of children, one of the things that we are doing and will be doing this year is working on building a children's ministry building, and we are going to have our groundbreaking next Sunday, the 12th, after church, about 1145, over there near the old, what now is the old office. We have moved our offices to the first floor of the gym, so if you're trying to find the pastors or the uh, secretaries or business manager, we're on the first floor of the gym in those rooms back in the back. Um, but it's an exciting time. I invite you to join us after church next Sunday. I also want to recognize a new member who, who joined us uh, a couple of weeks ago, but this is his first time to be in church, Moffitt Burris Sr. Moffitt, will you please stand so we could uh, see who you are? Moffitt is the father of one of our former pastors, Francis, and uh, also the father of an elder who's being ordained today, John. And Moffitt Jr., who also attends our church, he has children and grandchildren and in-laws all coming here. So we're glad to have him uh, as a patriarch as part of our congregation today. Thank you, Moffitt, for joining us, and I uh, hope you get a chance to speak to Moffitt after the service today. Today is ordination and installation service day, and uh, I'm glad we have a good crowd today, as we had a good crowd at our sun-up service today. The name Presbyterian comes from the Greek word in the Bible for elder, presbyter. In many ways, what we're doing today reminds us of who we are as a church. We are a church that is governed not by the pastor, not by one person, but by a group, by the elders who work together and the deacons who also work as officers of the church and help lead the church. And deacons in our church specifically do pastoral care and help the pastors in caring for those who are sick, who are grieving, who are needing, who just, just need a visit and a smile and a word of encouragement. And so at this time, I'd ask for those to be ordained and installed to please come forward as uh, deacons and elders, if you would. And while they're coming, I want to say a word of thanks to the deacons and elders who are rotating off. We've had good officers who have helped lead us in the past and they have gotten us to where we are today, and we are grateful for their leadership and encouragement. So the elders to be installed today are Brenda White, Bill Bearden, David Jamison, Jack Hathaway, John Burris, Megan McMillan, Pam Hutto, Peggy Bergen, Bunny and Deacons will be Bunny Runge, Greta Robertson's not here, Jay Gillum, Laura Winfield, Mary Jim Howe, Pam Lofton, and left out was Mandy McCaffrey is, is also to be installed. Tracy and I are going to split the questions up so y'all can probably hear a little variety in our voices, and uh, Tracy will ask a question to the deacon because he's a resource person for the deacons. But in your insert are the questions you will ask our elders and deacons. We are all called to follow Jesus Christ in our baptism. When we became Christians, we are called to follow him. For those who are elders and deacons are called to a higher way of life, we are called to set a better example as a model, to live the Christian We'll ask the question to reaffirm your faith as well as to uh, reaffirm your, your commitment to lead us. First, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all, and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you, do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit? the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you. Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable exposition of what the scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions 
as you lead the people of God. Will you, will you indeed? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's policy? Will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbor, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace unity and purity of the church. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? This is a question for the, specifically for the elders. At this point, elders and deacons have asked and answered the same question. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship nurture and service. Will you share in government and discipline, serving and governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And for the deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? In your ministry, Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Now, there are two questions for the members of the church. Do we, the members of the church, accept these people as elders and deacons chosen by God to the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ to do what we say we do? We do. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. If you do, will you please stand? And at this time, I invite those who have been ordained previously as elders to come forward for the laying on of hands. And I'd ask that uh, if we could have the deacons over here and the elders over here. Those who are to be ordained, if you will please, uh, those who be ordained, if you'll please come in front and let's make a line right here. Yeah. And those who to be ordained, if you if you can, if you're able, please kneel. And you kneel facing this way on the steps. Yeah. invite those who've been ordained to put their hand on, on these, and if you can't reach them, put your hand on the shoulder of someone in front of you as we pray together. Let us pray. Lord, by your grace and your love, by your Holy Spirit, you call each of us to follow you. We thank you that you raise up leaders to lead us in your way, to lead us in the way of truth, of love, and of grace. We ask that you endow these elders, these deacons, with the grace and the power, the love, the peace, the purity, the strength that they need to fulfill their office. Grant them, O oh Lord, a good measure of your presence, of yourself, as they seek to lead us as your people. Fill them with your great presence and love, and fill us as a church. Lead us into the future with hope, with courage, as we seek to follow you, our Lord and Savior. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And your elders invite you to rise and extend the right hand of fellowship to those who have been ordained. David. 
Welcome again, Pam. <laughs> welcome again, Bill. Yeah, welcome back. Welcome, Mandy. Welcome. Glad to have you. Welcome, Peggy. Welcome, Laura. Pam, welcome. Lenny, welcome. At this time, I invite the children to come forward for the children's time. Now come on up and sit down. I have something special. Very, very, very special in our family to show you today. And I don't know if you ever had one of these, but this was what, uh, what some people call a security blanket or a blankie. My daughter called it a baki. <laughs> we asked our daughter if she wanted to have it back. But she refused. But there was a time when my daughter would not go to sleep without this thing. And there was a time when we had to travel 30 miles back to Grandma's house because we had left this baki at her house instead of putting it in the car. And can you believe that? Look at this. Does it look like it's a real blanket anymore? <laughs> You know, you wouldn't wear it as a shawl or anything. But, you know, it reminds me of something. It rem How many of y'all had one of these things when you were little, when you were a little baby? You remember? <laughs> Nobody wants to admit it. But, you know, what this reminds me of is that there's a verse in the Bible that Jesus said that's really important. He said, do not store up for yourselves treasures here on earth. Where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. And I look at this, this baki, and I see how many holes it has on it, where, where some of the moths got in it, where it's been washed to death, trying to get the dirt off of it and the food off of it and stuff. And, you know, it just this thing that was so precious, probably the biggest treasure for one of our children at one time, and one of the biggest treasures in our family, is now just... It's not even worth framing or anything. <laughs> but, you know, it just is a reminder that life changes and things on this earth, the things that we think are so precious, all those toys you got for Christmas, one day you're going to say, I played with that. <laughs> and you'll say, why did I want that? Why was that so important to me? You know, it's really important to realize that some of the things that we think are so important here on this earth, or not. But there is one treasure that will never fade away. Anybody know what that is? You know, Christian? God. God is a treasure that will never get holes in it, that no moth will eat, that no thief can steal. Nobody can steal God, can they? And they're with you wherever you go and they can be, and God can be with you when you're old, like me, or when you're young, like you. God can be with you every step of the way. And that's really, really good news. And it's a good thing to remember as we begin a new year, what really is important. And Jesus said it like this, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because 
God never fails us, never will fade away. So let's pray, okay? Y'all repeat after me, okay? Jesus, thank you that you are a great treasure that will never fade away. Help us to love you more. Amen. Okay, thank you very much.